Pukeology podcast, where science meets your hilarious puke stories and the tips and tricks to stop that up chuckle that you need. You never know what's going to spew out of her mouth. Here's my mama, Dr. Puke Nemo. Have you ever had a craving that was completely out of the blue and nothing like you've ever had before? Or maybe you were admiring a certain type of food that you don't even like before you got pregnant. I know. And let me just tell you, there's some medical science behind why and what your body is trying to tell you. Let's dive into the bizarre world of pregnancy cravings in today's Pregnancy Pucology Podcast, episode 45, Pregnancy Cravings. And why do pregnant women love pickles? Want no more morning sickness, pregnancy nausea, or how about no more headaches or migraines? Visit our sponsor, nomonausea.com, the only natural way to stop nausea instantly. Or you can place nomonausea ban on your baby registry inside your delivery bag at Bye Bye Baby, or get it shipped for free in just two days on Amazon Prime. And since today's Amazon Prime Day, you know that Nomo bands from Nomo Nausea, Nomo Migraine, and Nomo Sleepless Nights are having sales going on, so go check it out. And know that we always take care of your little ones with Nomo Nausea Kids and Nomo Sleepless Nights Kids, now available at your local CVS stores. Wouldn't that be awesome to get a great night's sleep? So put your kids to bed with no more sleepless nights, kids. Let's listen to some hilarious pregnancy humor that may just make you want to pee your pants. Like you don't have to pee all the time anyway, with unbelievably crazy stories like pickle puke, dunk that nugget, and cottage cheese, please. If you want to learn more about your pregnancy, humor and knowledge is the key to help you survive these nine months. And just know we're in this together. Today, you will learn the science behind what is a pregnancy craving, why do cravings exist while you're pregnant, and most importantly, what is your body trying to tell you? You'll also get the inside tips as to what you should be eating in this 30-minute snack size podcast called Pregnancy Pukeology. Let's listen in. The Science of Puke, Pukeology. Pregnancy cravings. Well, pregnant women are always up to tell you that they've experienced very bizarre and exciting moments while they're pregnant. And it is exciting when you feel the baby kicking and stretching out and you know that you're carrying a brand new life inside. But your body can go through some very interesting changes as well. Bizarre things like morning sickness, but no mo with no mo nausea. And also the unexpected, unpleasant first trimester experiences, such as a wolf-like smell, and then why you are craving such interesting things. So pregnancy cravings is that strange thing that we're going to talk about when you experience all things that are pregnant. So what is a pregnancy craving? So during pregnancy, every woman is very unique, even including their pregnancy cravings. At least one or a specific type or particular food that is common in pregnancy. And we'll actually go through nine of the most common. Pregnancy cravings is a strong urge to reach for a particular food when you're pregnant. A true pregnancy craving. It is elicited a deep urge to eat a particular specific food group or a combination of food groups. Sometimes pregnancy cravings are so strong that they can make you like foods that you've never even liked before you were pregnant. For me, that was asparagus. And I'll tell you that story here. So I was pregnant, had never eaten asparagus, nor had I ever liked asparagus or Brussels sprouts. And I was microwaving it for my husband while I was pregnant. I took out the actual bundle of asparagus because I have no idea how to cook it when I was much younger. And all of a sudden, before I got from the microwave to the table, I ate the entire bundle of asparagus. My husband was like, you don't even like asparagus. And I knew that I didn't like asparagus either, but clearly the baby was trying to signal something that I was lacking some nutrients. And um, I actually ended up starting to really like leafy vegetables. 
And that's because of the the fact that you have a higher iron content as well as leafy vegetables are great because they also give you the vitamin K that sometimes you need a little bit extra of. So craving sometimes will make it almost difficult for you to stop thinking about the food that you're craving, no matter how hard you try or how you try to distract yourself. I always say, give into your craving just a little bit. So meaning, have a little tiny piece of whatever your body is trying to tell you. You don't have to eat or overeat. Just give it exactly what it wants. Just a taste. Now, It makes you want to satisfy your cravings at all costs, hence why it's the term craving and not just, hmm, I'd like that food. So you are willing to go to great lengths, such as waking up in the wee hours of the night to satisfy your cravings. And when it happens in that nature, there are some women who experience what's called pica. And pica is when you eat things that are actually unsafe for your body, such as you've heard some women will sit outside and eat dirt and like literally eat the soil. They'll try to eat other things like powdered um, dish detergent uh, for the you know dishwasher and stuff like that. So pica is a very, it's very rare, but some women do, and it's because they're lacking something in their diet. Um, hence why if you've ever heard of a, a woman who has what's called anemia, which is a low blood count, um, they will actually crave ice. So they'll like chomp on ice and you'll see that um, a lot. And I always ask, you know, are you anemic? And Women will say, yes, I am. How did you know? I'm like, because you're chomping on that ice and you're super happy. So those cravings sometimes tend to be a reflection of what it is that you're missing in your diet. Not all the time, but sometimes. So while about 50 to 90 percent of expectant mothers in America actually develop cravings to certain types of food groups, and this is all according to the research found in Frontiers in Psychology. So there's no known exact cause of a specific craving taste, texture, or flavor combination during pregnancy. But here's some factors that will cause you to have pregnancy cravings. The need to obtain certain type of nutrients. And this is what I was talking about with me, myself, needing more green leafy vegetables in my diet. When you become pregnant, your body becomes a source of nutrients for the growing baby. It is thought that you develop a craving for a certain type of food as your body runs low on these nutrients. While this is a theory and has been backed up by the majority, it fails to explain why pregnant women crave unhealthy things for nutrients. The second reason, hormonal changes. Rapidly changing hormones during pregnancy might be to blame. The hormonal changes happen to support your pregnancy and might sharpen your sense of urgency or urge for a certain type of foods. So again, that hormonal spike. You see it, women, when they say, you know, you're you're PMSing uh, prior to having your period, and that's just you crave chocolate. That's actually been known to be found. And there's actually a bromelain content um, that some women that has that addictive personality to chocolate and they found that at that concentration um, women will do anything to satiate that amount same thing is when you were on your period prior to being pregnant if you ever craved red meat uh, you again a hormonal spike you know in in your actual luteinizing hormone and also in progesterone will cause you to have these weird cravings for certain types of foods now it can be psychological as a third the craving during pregnancy may be more more than just a mental thing. It's a physio- physiological phenomenon where pregnant women um, are actually expected mm-hmm. to eat more during their pregnancy because they require more calories to support the growing baby. Now remember, you really only need 150 calories extra per day. So what does that look like? That's about a cup of yogurt or an extra piece of fruit, more than what you normally would actually be eating. And I make mention of this because a lot of women are always asking, what should I eat during pregnancy? You know, you know the things that you shouldn't be eating, but what should you eat? And I have an entire pregnancy pathology podcast dedicated to it. It's called what you should be eating in pregnancy, episode 16. So give your ears a listen and then fill your tummies for what is actually good. But going back to psychological, you are encouraged to eat 
this whatever you want phenomenon. And that's actually not correct. So you have to make sure that you are maintaining a healthy weight because a healthy weight is important for you and your baby, not just during, but also after. And if you're curious to find out what type of weight should you have or how much weight should you be gaining, there's another podcast that's dedicated directly to that. And it's called Pregnancy Weight Gain, episode 12. Going back to psychological one more time, I also want you to understand that women have a tendency of recollecting or recalling certain types of foods with a certain event. For example, I bet you remember the food that you ate before you were proposed to, or you might associate with your favorite thing that you used to do with your parents when you were a child, such as go have a certain type of ice cream. So every time you want to have an ice cream or a bunch of cruncha, for example, going to the movies with dad, those are also ingrained so that if you're upset and you just want a surge of that serotonin, you go and look back towards food as that helpful hint. But I will tell you that always try to create situational um, psychological events, meaning don't be dependent upon that actual food. And I'll tell you that there is one incredible, um, she's not just a scientist, but she's also a personal trainer and a psychological food trainer. Uh, Her name is Tanya Silva, and she did an incredible series about, you know, separating yourself from the addictive personality of food behavior. So if you are addicted to food, I would highly suggest you reach out to her. Um, She's done amazing Facebook lives with it, but I just wanted to also throw that out there to you. So if you are struggling with it before pregnancy, it doesn't get any easy after. But don't worry, we're in this together. When do pregnancy cravings start? The fact remains that pregnancy is unique to every woman. Surprisingly, some women fail to realize that they are pregnant until after they develop these cravings for certain types of foods. Other women develop cravings late in their pregnancy, while others never get a single craving at all. But that is actually very uncommon. The first trimester is when most Uh, most at the nearing end of the first trimester within the first three months is when the majority of women will experience these cravings. Now, organogenesis happens between the eighth to the 12th week, meaning that the organs are forming. And that is a high correlation with the nutrient factor that we were talking about before. Pregnancy cravings tend to peak in the next three months or the second trimester and then decline slowly during the last three months of pregnancy in your third trimester. A few women may experience cravings a few weeks after birth, but that's usually because of the fact that they just can't wait to have what they were told that they weren't able to. Such as the second I delivered, all I wanted was sushi. Really good sushi and maybe a little sip of a bubbly champagne just for something to go along with my sweet tooth. And of course, my absolute favorite big chocolate cake from Wright's Bakery. If you're not from Tampa, you don't know what that is, but I will tell you it is amazing, delicious chocolate cake, extremely coated in chocolate frosting. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it and my cravings and I'm not even pregnant. (laughs) Growing up on a Tuesday? One puke story. Ah, ah, ah. Green with envy, I thought was just a phrase until I watched someone at the theme park put the largest, most glorious pickle into their mouth. It was a pickle on a stick. I have never liked pickles, but when I was pregnant with my first, it looked so amazing. So I took one bite and I was completely hooked. The only problem is I just kept eating and eating and eating them. I ended up going through five pickles on a stick and it was a hot summer day and the hot sun and the pickle juice did not agree with my stomach. I ended up getting terribly sick in line to go see the dolphins and I looked possessed because it was green, of course. Since my husband was drinking a beer, the people around me looked as though I had a hangover. Aw, I can't wait until my bumps start showing. You say that now, Miss Emily, 
32, um, or th- Emily 32. But I will tell you that once you do start to show, sometimes that morning sickness just doesn't go away. I was in the drive through at Wendy's and there was chicken nuggets and Frosty was totally calling my name. Since I was in the car trying to hurry up with my two kids, which are under two in the back seat, I decided to combine the two together, dunking the chicken nuggets into the icy. Hmm. At that very moment, a huge wave of morning sickness came over me and I knew in that moment that I was pregnant again. Dun, dun, dun. I threw up all over my mom's shirt um, and it was just the fact that I thought about, number one, I just took chicken and chocolate and thought it was such a tasty meal together. Two, the thought of being pregnant again. And three, to change three kids in diapers. I started wailing and crying and now I look back and laugh. Lee, Snee, I'm so funny. Thank you so much for sharing your hilarious puke story. My husband and I have always been very fit. We do CrossFit, etc. Until I got pregnant and the doctor said it wasn't a good idea for me to do heavy lifting anymore. We were on the way to my in-laws when I was starving. We went through the drive-thru and of course my husband orders a salad. And I got the greasiest value meal on the, the menu. I scarfed the food down so fast that my husband thought I was going to choke. And I would add condiments directly to my mouth like a drink. So gross. Then he looked looked over at my folded leg and made a joke saying, you want some fruit with that cottage cheese? I knew he was talking about the side of my legs. And at that very moment, I broke down in tears and just started vomiting the nasty food I had eaten. I don't think I'll ever forgive him, especially since I ruined my favorite pair of Lululemon pants. Do you have a hilarious puke story that you just can't wait to share? Send it to me at pukeology, P-U-K-E-O-L-O-G-Y at nomonasia.com, N-O-M-O-N-A-U-S-E-A.com, or tweet me at pukeology so we can all have a good laugh. (laughs) Tips and tricks to stop the up chuckle that you need. So what are pregnant women craving when they're pregnant? Well, I'll tell you, about a fourth of you guys, 25%, crave sweets, which accounts for chocolate and candy, but very close to follow are those carbohydrates, which I like to call the brain's juice because that's what the brain feeds off of, such as pizza and chips, and that's an astounding 19% of you guys. Animal protein, like chicken or steak, fruit, dairy, and fast food came in at about 17%, followed by cold foods like ice cream and Slurpees, plus vegetables at only 12%. Sad. Since these cravings weren't grouped by sodium intake, it's important to talk about the most famous pregnant delicacy, pickles. So why do pregnant women crave pickles? Most pregnant women develop a craving for ice cream and pickles. Ew, sounds gross, but it's absolutely delicious. I was a ice cream and pickle fan myself, and I'm going to tell you something even grosser. I used to put mustard on it. (laughs) Pickles are appealing to other cravings because of their saltiness and their crunch, crunch factor, don't forget it. Sodium tends to decrease during pregnancy, and this might explain why most pregnant women crave pickles, because they are rich in sodium. Now, I personally had the worst cramps during my pregnancy, not the scary kind of cramps in your abdomen. Um, And if you want any more questions about what pregnancy cramps are, listen to episode 36. They will describe them, um, some that are scary, some that are not, and some that are actually very common called implantation cramps. But that's, of course, before you know that you're pregnant. So I had bad foot cramps, right? My feet literally like had Charlie horses in them almost every single night and I would wake up in the middle of the night. So my favorite thing was to eat pickles, popcorn, and mustard. Yes, all three had very high sodium levels, but they also had potassium. And sodium and potassium are known to help stop cramps in the hands or feet, hence why mustard is kept on the sidelines of all youth sports teams because they will break those cramps. So if you've ever had a really bad cramp, 
um, do what I did, right? Give yourself some, some mustard. Now, other women crave pickles because they are in the mood for pickles. Pregnancy heightens the sense of smell and causes a memory associated with certain types of food that brings you back to that wonderful time. I used to crave apples with peanut butter, and prior to getting pregnant, my husband and I would remember enjoying hot apple cider on a cold night when we were dating. So that's the mood-inspired memory. And that's why my son, who's my first baby, actually really loves it. I wish there was more science and study behind what you crave in pregnancy if that will correlate with your children and their dietary eating. And I will tell you that he gobbles down apples and I used to eat literally three apples and peanut butter a day. That was my favorite snack. And I used to always, that was my go-to. So another reason why women crave pickles is because pickles have a sour taste to them, which ensures them to get a balanced diet and enough calories. Now, did you know that there's over 8,000 taste buds on your tongue with over 100 receptors? The sense of taste is mediated by the taste receptor cells that are sampled inside of your mouth and report a sensation of taste to the center of the brainstem. This sensation of taste is generalized into five different categories. Number one, sweet. Number two, salty. Number three, sour. Number four, bitter. And number five, umami. Ooh, mommy, that's my favorite taste bud, um, only because of the category it's in, and I absolutely love it. So whenever somebody says, ooh, mommy, you can be like, yes, my umami taste buds. So if you ever want to see your taste buds, put some, put some food coloring on your tongue, and you'll be able to see these little bunched up little bumps. Now, taste buds are actually a group of 50 to 150 columnar taste receptor cells, which are bundled together in clusters. Think of like grapes. So imagine that these grapes have fur on them. So this fur is medically called papilla, which sit on the top of the tongue, and these are called the taste pores. And inside of these bundled receptors is actually the taste bud. So it is the culmination of the the grape with this fur on the top, which is actually moving and helping to move it. And then up underneath of it, where the actual stem would be of a cluster, those groupings together are actually your taste buds. So taste of anything in your mouth is followed by rapid and increased salivation, which tells your stomach to produce acid because something is coming down that we need to digest. The sense of smell also profoundly affects your sensation of taste. Have you ever been sick and food just doesn't taste the same? Or have you had COVID-19 and you lost your sense of taste or lost your sense of smell? They both are correlated with one another. So if you know that your nose is plugged, usually with like a thick mucus stuff, women, pregnant women have very thick mucus all the time because they actually have more fluid running through their body, you can't really smell very well, nor can you smell what you're eating, so it's going to taste different. Your brain, however, is incredible and has a taste memory. So even if it doesn't taste the same, you know what you're eating by the slight texture and the sight of what goes into your mouth. Tastes are disrupted due to intense temperature changes, such as super hot or super cold. Now, taste sensations are different than what we've been talking about. So we've been talking about the structure of taste, and we're going back to why is it that pregnant women crave pickles? So bitter. If you've had something bitter in your mouth, you actually are tasting quinoline, such as kale, collards, mustard greens, parsley, endivine, celery, arugula, and grain beverages are all examples. So if you just want something bitter and you're craving all of these things like kale and and mustard greens, your body's trying to tell you that that's what it's really wanting. Now salty, okay, here goes back to the pickles. Salt tastes substance of sodium chloride, which is NaCl, just for all my past chemists out there. Sea salt, tamari, miso, like miso soup, sea vegetables, sesame salt, pickles are all which give you that salty taste. And salt helps to clear the palate 
so that the next bite of something else is going to taste even better. Hence why if you've never had chocolate with salt on it, oh my goodness, it is the most incredible thing you will ever taste in your mouth. Because again, that's sweet and salty. Uh, If you have a pretzel with covered in chocolate, that crunch factor, that's the third. And that makes the ultimate delicious snack. Sour. So sour may shock you, but it's actually an acid called hydrogen chloride, HCl, which is hence the sour taste. Lemon, lime, sauerkraut, fermented different dishes, which you're not supposed to be eating while you're pregnant. I'm just throwing that out there. And pickles also may have a sour taste to you as well. So if you're craving that sour, that salty, pickles is your friend. All right, pungent. So my favorite word is umami. I love the pickup line, right? Um, I'm waiting to get some umami and is sensed by the amino acid glutamate, which is also known as glutamic acid. Ginger, garlic, raw onions, white radishes, red radishes, scallions, wasabi, and spices like cumin are all example of umami. And I actually have a recipe, which is for a salad dressing that combines all of your taste buds. So if you're really looking forward to that, go on to nomonagia.com slash blogs, and you will be able to see that incredible taste, which excites your mouth by having a salad dressing that has all these things. And you should be activating all of your taste buds. So now you understand why pregnant women have cravings. What's your body trying to tell you from psychological to hormonal to physiological and what those bizarre pregnancy cravings are associated with and why is it that pregnant women love pickles? Thanks for listening to Pregnancy Picology Podcast, episode 49. If you love me, love our podcast, please give me five stars for hearts and ratings, and don't forget to download this episode, but more importantly, share it with all your Prego friends. Thanks again for listening to Pregnancy Picology and Podcast, episode 49, Pregnancy Cravings, and why do pregnant women love pickles? Pugology Podcast, edutainment at its finest.